The measuring electrode, uh, which is sensitive to the hydrogen ion, develops a potential voltage directly related to the hydrogen ion concentration. The reference electrode contains a fill solution, which slowly leaches out into the electrode and uh, to the, through the reference junction. The fill solution makes contact with the solution and the measuring electrode, completing the circuit. Thus, the voltage between the reference electrode should maintain at a constant voltage, and the measuring electrode will change proportionally. What's important here is to know that if pH is not working well, uh, many times, I'm going to say 80% of the time, the problem is, is, the, is the reference electrode. And the reason for that in an industrial probe is, one, you could be running out of potassium chloride. Number two, you could be contaminating that pota potassium chloride. And number three, you can uh, uh, block the liquid junction. Uh, some people call it a frit. You can block that and, and keep the uh, potassium chloride from leaching out into the system. Next slide. Uh, we talked about temperature before. It's important here to see that if we go down the middle of the column, you, you see a basically the same thing that was on those other slides. Uh, zero uh, millivolts at 7 pH and 59 millivolts in either direction as it moves up to 6 or down or, or up to 8. But as your temperature changes, uh, let's say it goes up to 50 degrees C, uh, 7 stays constant, but your 6 will generate 64 millivolts instead of 59. Um, 5 pH will generate 128 instead of 118. And that is strictly a function of temperature. Uh, some people think the temperature compensation compensates for this difference, and it really does not. The temperature compensation in any pH probe <coughs> simply takes the, if, if you go back to the Nernst equation, the Nernst equation, part of it has the uh, temperature in the equation. So it's kind of a variable constant, if you will. and the temperature compensation just tells you that at that pH and at that temperature, your pH is correct. Next slide. Your temperature compensation does not compensate for chemistry changes in the solution. It only compensates for changes in the glass electrode slope. It does not compensate, and this is what I talked about just a second ago, it does not compensate back to 25 degrees C. It compensates only for the Nernstian effect. Um, go ahead. <coughs> Next slide. All right, let's talk about calibration. A lot of people know how to calibrate a pH uh, probe. You normally uh, take it out of process, you'll stick it in a, a 4 buffer, uh, you clean it, you stick it in a 7 buffer or an 8 buffer or a 10 buffer, whatever buffers you're going to use. What you're doing at that point really is, I'm going to say, reestablishing a zero. If you're using an industrial probe and you, you, you continually use this potassium chloride that's in the reference, that reference electrode is changing potentials the whole time you're losing electrolyte. So what you do when you recalibrate is you take into effect the age of the measuring electrode and the amount of potassium chloride and the age of the reference, and you re-zero it so that it's reading correctly. So you'll stick it in a 4 buffer, um, make the instrument read 4, uh, clean it in DI water, uh, 7 buffer if you can't find a DI, uh, DI uh, excuse me, a, a, a 7 buffer or a DI water and then stick it in your second buffer, and those buffers should be about 2 pH different. Uh, the other way that you can calibrate, and, uh, and I like this, especially in applications where taking out the electrode is difficult or uh, major change in, in temperature if the electrodes are hot, is to do a grab sample. Uh, walk over with your lab and a beaker, uh, go to the process, pull a sample, uh, there are techniques on doing this correctly, and we can always talk about it at some, at some other point. We don't have enough time to, today. But grab a sample using the proper techniques, uh, read what the pH of the process is with your lab, and then simply make your analyzer read exactly what your lab unit is doing. So go to the next slide. You can use either the standard solutions or uh, grab samples. So calibration of pH uh, measuring instruments is necessary because similar electrodes 
may produce slightly different potentials in the same solution, and a corrective adjustment is needed at the measuring instrument. Also, electrode output will change over a period of time. Again, the lack of potassium chloride in an industrial probe, which makes periodic calibration necessary. Um, recalibration intervals, uh, everybody asks a lot, you know, how often do we recalibrate these things? Uh, that's really based on operating experience or whatever your company uh, mandate is. But basically, you recalibrate at intervals to uh, eliminate drift and make sure your pH measurement is, is good. Uh, many times I've seen people take a grab sample, use a lab, and if, if the pH is right on or close enough, uh, they don't even recalibrate at that time. Uh, next slide. <coughs> okay, we've spent a lot of time talking about industrial probes. I'd also like to talk about high purity measurements. Uh, these measurements uh, are typically used in power plants, but I've also uh, seen where uh, chemical plants making DI water or other applications where the conductivity is less than 10 microsiemens, uh, where people will use high purity uh, pH measurements. Go ahead, next slide. Uh, in a public in a power plant, why is pH uh, measured uh, at this point? It's because they, you want to control corrosion. I mean, why are why are you measuring pH, uh, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, and ORP, and others? Is you're trying to co co control the corrosion that's happening in the tubes and other plants, uh, parts of your plant, and of course for proper water treatment. Next slide. The challenge in ultra-pure water is the low ionic sample. If we're talking about DI water, which is deionized water, there's very little to help a pH electrode. In an industrial probe, uh, you've got plenty of help uh, in the solution, in the beaker. Uh, you've got other contaminants, if you will, that helps that salt bridge get created from the reference to the measuring. In ultra-pure water, the challenge is low ionic sample. Uh, Again, let's go back to power plants. You do everything you can to get that down to H2 and O with maybe a little bit of ammonia in it. Uh, but you're talking about low ionic samples. Next slide. The challenges of measuring pH in pure water is your reference junction potentials again. We talked about that in the industrial probe. You don't want to see differences in the potentials in a reference uh, electrode. And the reason you don't want that is because you don't want it to look like it's drifting or giving you incorrect uh, readings. Streaming potentials can also happen in low ionic uh, samples. Streaming potentials are generally caused by using ultra-pure water in some sort of plastic tubing or plastic monitoring system. Uh, I use the word scraping. Uh, the water just scraping past this plastic can cause static charges which will affect the potentials being developed at the glass and measuring electrode, and therefore can <coughs> cause errors in pH. That's the reason that we always recommend that a grounding rod be used in the sample. And of course, contamination of area area and leakage. <coughs> and I see that quite a bit uh, if the flow sample is not high enough. If you're down around 25 or 50 cc's, you can actually cause some CO2 leakage from the exit side of the chamber to come back up and to contaminate the sample. Next slide. <coughs> the reference uh, junction, a low resistance at the liquid junction is critical for a stable pH reading. In high purity water, the electrolyte solution can actually be washed away, leading to a high resistance at the liquid junction. This will again call, create the pH reading and make it look like it's unstable. We use a flowing reference junction, we'll show that in the next slide, that will help the pH stay stable by continuing to submit to provide an adequate amount of potassium chloride to leach out into the, uh, into the chamber. We also use the solution ground uh, to eliminate that uh, <coughs> excuse me, streaming potential that we were talking about before. Next slide. 